Hello and welcome back to the channel. So thank you to everyone for tuning in today and for all those that subscribe to the channel. So as the uh, little clip showed before, this is my cobalt blue tarantula that I am actually going to rehouse. Just trying to show you there in the tunnel. Um, the thing with these species is because they're fossorial and they live underground, I'll just quickly show you there, that's the new enclosure that I'm going to put this in. So it's a lot deeper, a lot more moisture in that one as well. So this older one is a lot smaller, but I had the tarantula in it from a tiny sling. And with these, you don't really see them. So you don't really have a gauge on how big they're getting unless you see the molts. So you can see from the webbing here, it is very, very thick webbing, but done in like a tube underneath and they excavate and bring all the substrate up from beneath and chuck it on top. And I have seen this one out a few times, but she normally just um, runs back on inside. So I'm just going to try and see where she is. But this one is a confirmed female. Let's go in a bit closer. Okay, so I'm just destroying her entrance there. So if she was around there, I don't think she's going to be too happy. And they can be defensive. But here we go. I'm just going to try and see if I can locate her at the rear because I know she's not at the front at all. So you just got to be very, very careful when you're just excavating all the substrate out just in case you don't get anything collapse on them or you're going to scare them anyway. But there we go. So I think you can see right there, she is there. There's no movement at all yet. Let's see if I can come a little bit closer in a second. There she is. She's right there where I'm tapping. There we go. I'm just going to see if she's still okay. Still no movement from her. I think you can see where she is. There you go. She just moves slightly. You can just see the abdomen. So I think I've done this at the right time because she, the next molt or two should be too big for this enclosure. So she needs more deeper and uh, way more substrate in there. So I think I did this perfect. So now the only problem I've got is trying to get her out of here. I have seen where on other channels people use the water method where you can flood the burrow and it will force the tarantula to naturally run up and out. But where the tarantula goes, I don't know. That's why I'm doing this one in the sink. But there you go. You can see her there in the abdomen and you can see she's got her adult colours. I couldn't really get a good measurement of her when you see her out shortly, but um, she's now getting, she's a sub-adult size. So I went for this one, so I thought just tip it on the side and just literally remove the substrate slowly and find her come out very, very calmly. But as you see, the substrate is compacted. So when I pull this down, and I think you'll see, here we go, boom. So that's what happens. So this is where I've pre-recorded this. I'm talking over the top because I had kids there and they were so loud. So this is where I panicked because I thought, because I don't really get to see this one a lot. I thought, oh my God, she's dead. I mean, as you can see there, she's just on her head and it all collapsed. But this is a risk you do. But I didn't want to do it with flooding because it makes a tarantula naturally panic and it will run very, very fast because um, it's um, fight or flight. So it thinks it's going to die with the flooding. So here that you can see no movement whatsoever. I thought she was dead, but then you can see she was just a little bit stunned and she's okay. So she landed on the substrate, so she's not hurt, but um, I didn't like that at all. But it's just good to see the colour. So you can see she's got the adult coloration. I think if I remember from looking at her, I think she's a good few inches. Um, she's not fully grown. This is a very, very large uh, deli cup, but I think she's a good three inches plus. So sub-adult at the beginning so she's on her way so i've got a male of this species as well so i'm definitely hoping to pair these but i've read and seen a lot of things about these that they can be defensive but i don't know what it is with all mine they're all really calm uh, i've only had the odd one which is the tilicata which um alba Pelosum, which is aggressive um and maybe a trinidad chevron but all the ones that I see that are truly defensive in my collection, they're not. I think because I just leave them be, they're really, really calm. She just doesn't like the light. She's aware that I'm there. But I think you can see she's beautiful, got a good coloration. And now I've got to try and see if I can get her cupped. 
So I had to cut for about a couple of minutes because she started running around and I couldn't do that with the camera. So I had to get Lucy to come in, uh, do the filming for me while I um, try to get her in. But you can see here now she's just not really bothered. She moves slowly and you'll get a good close up of her in a minute when I get her in. So you can see she opened out. She's still a good size, maybe on the way to four inches. But it's just you don't see them that often and for the coloration on them they are absolutely stunning i wish they did come out a lot more at night time she does come out so it's like the nocturnal looking around for food but with these species as well because they do a hole at the entrance if you overfeed you will never ever ever see this tarantula so i slightly underfeed to the point that you can see the abdomen slightly small but then they come up and leave the feet at the front and they'll actually come out and look around and she's actually stayed up top before so I could hand feed her and um, I'll show you that in future clips and uh, I think that's better because then you can keep an eye on the tarantula instead of it just staying down in the burrow because if you overfeed you won't even see it at the entrance it would just be down gone and out of the way so I don't think we're going to get any trouble of her going in here I think she's going to be reluctant to move little nudge no defense response at all I think so I've got the light from my halo on as well. I think that she can see that. So she's just bunching her legs up to cover her eyes. But I think she'll run off in in a minute. But definitely a good species to have in the hobby. I cannot wait for her to get much larger. I quite enjoy the more defensive species and stuff like that as well. So I do want to get a few more. But there we go, she is absolutely gorgeous. So plenty of room for her to burrow in this one. I've already part excavated this, so she's got a deep enough burrow, just so it's a bit darker for her. But uh, I'll see if I can get some footage of her in a week or two, just to show you how much more she has done in her enclosure. But let's see if we can get her to go in. There we go. Almost like a tiger pattern on the, the abdomen. See, when she opens up, you can see she is a lot bigger than what... Um, I think so I'll try and get a good measurement of her next time but now I've seen her abdomen I think I'll give her some more food in the next couple of days but I just want to see if she starts laying some web and digging but there you go off she goes so and they do that straight in there in the dark hole and then they crunch all the legs up so let's see how much she's done in a couple of weeks so let's cut to that now okay so this is actually two weeks later and you can see she comes up and moves her water dish, but I've put it back in the same spot. She's actually webbed in the plants on the right and at the front, she started laying the web down. But what she has done is done her burrow deeper. And I mean, right down to the bottom. There's the food that I gave her a week ago and she's threw that out. So I'll clean that up in a moment. But now I'm gonna see if I can give you a shot of her. I can see her on the eye, but to try and get her on the camera is proven a bit awkward, but I do in a second. So just bear with me. I think you can see where she is. So she's dug further down by about five, six, maybe seven inches, and then she's going to the left. So she does like a curve, I'm just gonna do a tunnel underneath. Okay, I had to cut that there, the camera wouldn't focus, so I'm gonna see if I can get you a bit of a close up. So she knows that I'm there, so now she's starting to back up slightly. But you can see it, I do get a better picture in a second. There we go. So you can see she's made the tunnel more narrow as she's gone down, but you can see the webbing and the spring tails on the wall. So she lines the wall with web, which secures it, makes it stronger so it doesn't collapse on her. So there we go, all rehoused. That's how I rehouse my cold blue. So I do hope you enjoy that video and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.